Mela region is to achieve growth with social uh, with social equity that uh, that is growth that is shared our, our objective is to uh, make sure that there is more inclusion and that people especially young people in the region women smallholder farmers in uh, in lagging areas do not feel excluded from the economy and from society that is what we're focusing on and that is why climate change becomes important because actually the, uh, the, cl the cl climate change affects the poorest and the weakest and therefore it creates more economic exclusion more social exclusion it affects certain parts of the country the mountainous regions in morocco the west and south part uh, of uh, tunisia or upper egypt for example so uh, working on dealing with the challenges of climate change is very important for us to achieve growth and include and economic inclusion in the Middle East and North Africa region. All right, let's move on now with a look through the top headlines here in France today with Flo Villamino. Hello there, Flo. Okay. Now, uh, we have just been talking so much about the US presidential elections, but it is time to move on. We're going to talk about France election here coming up in May next year. The process of finding candidates is really coming together. We are pretty sure we're going to see a new candidate throw his hat into the ring this Wednesday. That's right. Uh, it's not a major surprise. Uh, we saw it coming. It was all a question of when. This is the former economy minister, Emmanuel Macron, and he is set to announce his candidacy, make it official uh, this morning in Bobigny, just outside of Paris. Now, according to the right-wing paper, Le Figaro, do keep in mind this is the right-wing paper, uh, they're saying this is a major slap in the face for the socialist president, François Hollande, and his prime minister, Manuel Valls. Why is that? Well, they were kind of keeping a mystery about what they're going to do. So it seems like Macron might have beat them to the punch by announcing his candidacy. Uh, according to Le Figaro, he's caught the left completely off guard because what's interesting about Macron's En Marche party uh, is that it's neither from the left nor from the right. It's kind of a more centrist party. And so it could be a real thorn in the side for the left because so far uh, they haven't been able to come up with an obvious candidate for the presidential election next year. And it's not just a timing problem for the socialists, is it? There's also the opposition Les Républicains, the centre-right party. Uh, they were hoping to keep the focus very much on them. They've, they're, they're right in their primaries at the moment, aren't they? That's right. Round one of that primary is on Sunday. Uh, and Le Figaro, once again, says that Emmanuel Macron is the surprise guest at that primary. Now, his timing, the timing of announcing his candidacy, uh, is very calculated. Because, as I said, Macron is neither on the left nor on the right. In fact, his free market view of the economy is usually what you would associate with a right-wing party, uh, and so he could really suck some votes away from Les, Repu Les Républicains, <laughs> in particular uh, Alain Juppé, because Alain Juppé, is at the, uh, who's seen as being the front-runner in the race so far, he is always trying to come across as an alternative to the president, François Hollande. Uh, well, and here you have a new alternative mm. to the president, Emmanuel Macron, uh, and so he could be a real thorn in the side for Alain Juppé in particular. Yeah, he's very different, isn't he? He's much younger. He's 38 years old. Like you said, he's neither officially left nor right wing. He wasn't even a member of the Socialist Party when he was on the Socialist government. Um, a bit of a risky move for him as well, though, isn't it? That's right. And Lupignon, the pro-business paper, takes a closer look at this. But they're looking at what Macron says about this. And this is very interesting. Macron's entourage says that this is not an anti-Hollande strategy, but rather the, a strategy to help François Hollande. How does this work? Well, let me walk it through you. Essentially, by announcing his candidacy right before Les, Les Républicains hold their primary, he wants to block Alain Juppé. Now, by blocking Alain Juppé, this will help Nicolas Sarkozy win the primary. Uh, and, uh, and essentially, uh, François Hollande thinks that he'll have a better chance of beating Nicolas Sarkozy than Alain Juppé. So Emmanuel Macron says that he's actually helping François Hollande. This sounds a lot like House of Cards. It does. I've sort of got images of horse races going on. Uh, this race certainly is getting very crowded, that is certain. That's right. And in fact, let's take a look at Lizzie Kuh, the pro-business paper today. They're saying that the race to the Élysée Palace is picking up speed. Uh, and Alain Juppé, who we've been talking about this morning, actually gives an interview to Lizzie Kuh, uh, where he says he's a shield against populism. And actually, he plays down the threat of Emmanuel Macron. He says, look, yeah, Macron is you know, presenting himself as the knight in shining armor that's going to save France. But Alain Juppé says, be careful of people who uh, do the opposite of what they're going to say and say the opposite of what they're going to do. So a little jab for Emmanuel Macron, a jab for Nicolas Sarkozy as well in this uh, interview, because 
once again, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy is the main rival so far for Alain Juppé. And he says that Nicolas Sarkozy is completely incoherent. All right, speaking of Sarkozy, uh, some new kind of shock uh, allegations coming out about him in the papers. That's right. Now, this is, a, this is a little bit of a confusing story. You can read all about it here in Mediapart. The photo you can see there is a uh, businessman, a French-Lebanese businessman named Ziad Takiedine, who says that uh, in this interview with Mediapart that he gave suitcases full of cash to Nicolas Sarkozy, and this cash came from the former Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi. We're talking about suitcases of cash uh, that come up to about 5 million euros. And this was right before the 2007 presidential election. You might remember Nicolas Sarkozy won that presidential mm -hmm. uh, election. This is a story that's been coming up time and time again in the press. But this new video of this interview where he talks about these the size and shape of these suitcases of cash has really gone viral. If you need a crash course in the story, do check out Liberation. They talk about the, uh, the missing chapter in the uh, Takiye soap opera. So if you need a crash course, check out this article. And let's just finish by saying that Nicolas Sarkozy denies Absolutely. these allegations. Absolutely. Let's do remind people of that. <laughs> Thanks so much. Flo Villamino will be back later on looking through the international papers for us as well. Right now, we're going to take a short break here on Live from Paris. We'll see you in a couple of minutes' time. <laughs>